Hey, Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This is part of my Quick Tips lesson series where I'm trying to do a series of lessons that are shorter and simpler than my, my usual lessons. In this lesson, I am going to share with you the seven things that I think contributed cumulatively to me injuring my arm really badly two different times. Uh, guitar playing, repetitive stress injury that was tendonitis to the point where it really, really hurt to play where I couldn't play and where I thought maybe I'm not going to be able to play anymore. So I desperately went through a phase of learning and trying everything I possibly could. And now I just want to share with you what I think are the seven things that actually caused those injuries and what I'm doing about each of them now to prevent it from happening again. And what I did about each of them to heal in the first place. Thankfully, I'm totally healed. And um, I feel like if, as long as I keep an eye on these seven things, and take care of myself in these ways that I'm good to go. I can play as long as I want now. I can play as much as I want now um, without having issues. And I think that's gonna be the case as long as I'm keeping an eye on these things. I gotta say first, before we jump in, that I am not a medical professional. I am not trained in health or being a uh, physical therapist or anything like that. So this is not advice for you. This is not telling you what to do. This is just sharing what I went through and the things that I'm doing. So that being said, Let's jump right in. I'm gonna fly through the list of seven things that I think made uh, the, caused the issues in my arm, and then I'm gonna go back through the list and say what I'm doing about them now. Some of them are gonna seem more obvious than others. So thing number one was just playing for long stretches of time without taking breaks. That's one of these obvious ones. We'll come back to say how I'm dealing with that now. Uh, thing number two is playing guitars that were not set up well playing guitars that had high action, which cause, causes more tension. Anything we can do to minimize a little bit of tension, we're, we wanna do that. So I wasn't prioritizing having all my guitars set up really well with low action, and I think that was definitely contributing to it. Uh, number three, jumping in cold, not warming up. Uh, big thing, I talk about warming up on, on a lot of other videos. So huge, huge important thing for me uh, personally. So I'll come back and talk about how I do that when we go through the solutions. Thing number four, um, I used to play with my wrist bent all the time, um, thinking that that was the proper technique. Some people will advocate for that. You'll see some players play like that with the wrist out, um, and I was doing that all the time. I actually think this is one of the biggest problems, one of the biggest issues that caused um, my injuries. We'll come back to it uh, in a second for the solution. Um, thing number five is reaching four notes instead of shifting. So if I play like this major seven arpeggio shape, this is uh, C major seven in the fifth position, and I try to reach for this other note instead of letting my hand lightly shift over. If you're doing that constantly when you're playing, reaching and stretching instead of shifting is causing more tension. So I was doing that a lot. Uh, thing number six, almost through on the list here, is just squeezing too hard, using too much pressure. The first video in this series was about the pressure test to see how much pressure does it actually take to play a good note. Um, so just playing constantly with more pressure than we need will lead to problems. And the seventh thing on this list, I saved the biggest one for last, kind of anticlimactic, because you're not gonna be surprised, but it's overall self-care and health, like the big things that if you don't take care of these things, you're not only potentially gonna get injured, uh, but you got to give your body what it needs to heal. You got to give it. And as I got desperately, you know, trying to figure this out and researching it, these things come up again and again and again. Nutrition, sleep, physical fitness and flexibility and big, big, big stress management. If your body's stressed, it's not going to heal. So um, took those things super, super seriously. So let's go back over the list and just say, what's the solution to each of these that I prioritized to thankfully get to a place now where I feel totally healed and um, just gonna superstitiously or not <laughs> take these things so seriously. And uh, maybe some are more effective than others, but I don't care, I'll do whatever it takes to, to stay healthy and not have those injuries again. So thing number one, not playing for too long of stretches of time. The beauty about this now is that I more off, I practice with higher quality practice with deliberate practice, which I've talked about in a lot of videos. So I'll put a link in the description to some videos about deliberate practice. Uh, but now I can't, if I practice with quality practice, I can't really go that long anyway, mentally. So my mind has to take a break by the time my body needs a break and it's just perfect. Like 
I get way more out of my practice time. It's way higher quality. If, I'm, if you're playing for long stretches of time without taking breaks and you're mentally not tired, we're, we're just kind of spinning our wheels anyway and wasting time. So thing number two, very easy. This is the action thing. I just make sure all my guitars are set up really well. I'm not changing like the gauge of my strings or anything that, that I, I just still have the sound that I want from them, but they're just set up nicely so they're as easy to play as possible. And I don't spend time playing other people's guitars if they're not set up well. Uh, thing number three uh, is warming up, religiously warming up, deliberately warming up. Um, I have some videos about that. I have what I think is the best warm up, the one that I do pretty much every time I play. I'll put a link to that in the uh, description as well. I could go on and on about warming up, but I'm going to keep this a quick tip video. So I'm going to move on and I'll talk more about warming up in the future. Uh, thing number four is the wrist. And so this is one that I'm still working on and finding to be extremely effective. Sometimes we need to have this kind of uh, wrist, right? So if I'm going to play this, this is a kind of a cool voicing of A dominant seven sharp nine. Um, can I play that with a with a straight wrist? Well, whoa, interesting that I actually can. So I would have thought before that I need this big amount of space here, which is good and is necessary sometimes. So when it's necessary, we do it and right away, I'm trying to go back to the straight wrist and still working on this one. I'll catch myself like, oh, can I make that wrist straighter? And I'm finding it to be really helpful for easing up the tension. So that was thing number four. Uh, thing number five was the stretching and reaching instead of shifting. So now if I go back to this um, C major seven, I basically already demonstrated this. I'm going to shift over here. And if it means that I can't connect the note as perfectly legato, I sacrifice that. That is okay. I would rather have the relaxed feel and the longevity than have this perfect legato that makes me try to do this reach and stretch that's causing all this tension. And then it's like, as I'm playing, working through a bunch of arpeggios or something like that, causing tension over and over again. What I find though, is that if we play lightly and do a nice swift shift, it uh, we can do that with very connected sounds. Um, the Segovia scales by Andrew Segovia uh, uses this uh, methodology where you want to shift instead of reach for all of the scales in the classical guitar pedagogy. So just another example of that for ergonomics on the guitar. And I'm going to mention this a little more next week in my next quick tip video. Um, and thing number six was squeezing too hard. Check out the first video in this series, the pressure test. I spent deliberate time not just saying, okay, I'm going to try to play everything lighter. I like really was like, now the thing I'm practicing is can I just go through and play simple things as lightly as possible with something so horrible like this. <laughs> it's hard to say, it's hard to uh, talk about the silver linings, but there are usually silver linings. I wouldn't have the technique that I have now, the light, the ability to play so, so light if I didn't go through that and, and say, I'm just going to try to play with as little pressure as possible. And it's become a benefit of, of my technique um, now. And the final thing was the overall health. Um, just huge. I just did everything I possibly could, including things like I went to acupuncture. I got physical therapists, did all the exercises they told me to do, got massage. I still do this massage on myself all the time. And I find that to be really helpful for loosening it up or if it you know feels tired ever, I do that. Um, really, really taking sleep seriously because that's a time that your body heals, uh, taking nutrition really seriously because that's also what you need for your body to heal. Um, being over overall, trying to be healthy physically, uh, with fitness, all the normal stuff, right? But going to physical therapy made me realize I say, Oh yeah, you're having this issue here. Well, it's not just about this. It's over here, this muscle in your, you know, what? and I'm not saying this is how it is for everybody, but like, um, just realizing, wow, how connected the body is. Some little weakness here, a problem here could trigger this, could trigger this, could trigger this. Um, and again, I'm not trained at this stuff, so I'm not telling you. I'm just saying that's the the impression I got from it and realizing, oh my gosh, just overall uh, physical fitness and flexibility and, and strength is going to be helpful here. I don't need to be an Olympic athlete, but I, I'm going to try to make sure I re exercise regularly. Um, and stress management was just massive. Also, I started meditating um, and just learning that if your body is, if you're stressed, you're not going to heal. Or if you're stressed, you're going to get injured. So, um, super hard to do. Things are stressful. Life is stressful. It's, it's hard. I get stressed, but, um, I started meditating and, uh, deep breathing and I, I, I love them. I do both of those things still. When I warm up, I do deep breathing. I, I just taking a bunch of oxygen and then 
breathe it out while I'm warming up. And I find that to be really effective. I'll do it at other times as well. And I still meditate um, every day. I love it. I absolutely love it. So that's another kind of silver lining uh, that I fell in love with. So um, <laughs> those are the seven things that I think caused my arm injury and the things that I'm I did about them to heal and healing took a long time it took like three years slowly 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 um, but now it's totally better and I am taking those seven things really seriously to prevent myself from getting injured again um, if you might be interested in um, checking out some of the arpeggio shapes like what I was playing here for a second as the demonstration I have a chord tone arpeggio pack that's totally free uh, it has 12 different chords um, and five different shapes of the arpeggio chord tones uh, all over the guitar for all of them which are just awesome for outlining chords and um, playing melodies through chord progressions and stuff like that you can grab that with the link in the top of the description totally for free or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones in my next video in this series i'm going to talk about something kind of controversial i'm going to share my thoughts on the three notes per string scale system um, it's going to relate a little bit to what we talked about today. So I hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.